In this video, we are going to learn about thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity is a parameter that tells you how much heat a material can transfer through it by means of heat conduction. So let's begin. So what is thermal conductivity? It's a measure or ability of a material to conduct heat. It's a number. So basically it has a numerical value. It also has some units. And the units are typically watts per meter Kelvin or watt per meters uh, degree centigrade. Then we know that for different materials, the thermal conductivity value should be different because it refers to a material's ability. And for perfect thermal insulators, it should be zero because a thermal insulator does not allow much heat to be transferred through it. And similarly, for a good thermal conductor, you expect it to have a large value because you know that there is going to be more heat that's going to be transferred through it. Then there is a fact that this parameter varies with temperature and we're going to look into to this per thing in a bit more detail. And we also know that in the same material in different direction, it's also different. So for different materials, thermal conductivity is defined and for different temperature or for different direction, thermal conductivity also varies quite significantly. So now let's take a plain wall and we know the temperature difference across the wall is given by delta T. We know the thickness of the distance between the two sides of the wall uh, is L and let's say we know the amount of heat that is being transferred is Q through the wall and we also know the cross-sectional area A. Then from Fourier's law we can say the amount of heat transferred Q equals K A delta T over L and then we can write K equals Q times L over A times delta T. So from this definition we can understand or can figure out a way to measure thermal conductivity value but we have to choose the unit parameter values for each of these parameters L, A, delta T and we choose a length of 1 meter, area of cross-sectional area of 1 meter squared and temperature difference across a wall that is 1 Kelvin, 1 degree centigrade and now we have to measure that what's the amount of heat that is being transferred through this wall because it's a plain wall and we assume the heat transfer to be one dimensional we can set up an experiment and measure it and so we find that the amount of heat that was transferred was 1.7 watts so what does that mean? So it means that this particular material has a K value or thermal conductivity value that equals 1.7 times 1 divided by 1 times 1 with all the units from that equation and we find that the thermal conductivity value for this particular material is 1.7 watt per meter degree Celsius. So this means that this material transfers 1.7 watts per unit cross-sectional area, per unit thickness, per unit temperature difference. But provided that you make a plain wall out of it, if you have a different geometry, then you're going to have different uh, kind of calculation, but that would still give you the same kind of ability of how much heat is being transferred, which is actually called thermal conductivity. So now we have to think that what would happen that if we were to take a different material and then we again measure the amount of heat transfer through that plane wall made of a different material but which is still has unit parameters and say for example we find the amount of heat transfer was 40 then that would mean that for that particular material thermal conductivity value k is 40 watts per meter degree celsius and this is why thermal conductivity is very important because it gives you an estimate of how a material transfers it through it. And we know for different materials, the amount of heat that is being conducted through them should be different. So let's take four materials, a brick wall, a glass wall, a copper wall, and say for example, a diamond wall, so an entire wall made of diamonds. And now we make sure that they're all plain walls so their surfaces are smooth and we have 
made sure that all of them have the same cross-sectional area of 1 meter squared, same length of 1 meter or same thickness and same temperature difference across them. Then we are going to find that their thermal conductivity values are 1.7, 1.4, 401 and for diamond it's the highest nearly 2300 watt per meter degree Celsius. So this means that if you measure the amount of heat transfers, each of them would transfer different amount of heat and thermal conductivity captures that very well. And this is because different materials have different crystal structure or different lattice structure and because of this difference in lattice structure, they transfer different amount of heat. So let's see a range of different materials and their thermal conductivity values. So we're going to start off in the top left corner. Uh, in the blue region, we have some solid metals such as silver, copper or steel, they have very high thermal conductivity. Then we have a slightly less thermal conductivity compared to the solid metals. So they are liquid metals such as sodium uh, or mercury. And this uh, green region is quite interesting because this occupies a large, pretty large space from nearly 0.1 to say 50 and here you have non-metallic solids such as oxides or plastics. For metallic solids, the lattice structure is pretty well organized. For non-crystalline or amorphous solids, you have a pretty uh, different arrangement of molecules which is not very regular. So that kind of disorder uh, causes its uh, thermal conductivity values to be less different than metals. So after that we have some non-metallic liquids such as water or oils, then we have some non-metallic gases such as helium, hydrogen or carbon dioxide and insulators. So these are very important because they make sure that you uh, do not transfer that much heat through them such as fibers or foams and you can also evacuate air and create evacuated insulating materials which also have very low thermal conductivity. So this region is also quite important in terms of engineering applications when you want heat to not be transferred or you want to kind of keep your temperature uh, consistent or fixed mostly. So then you have to use insulators in your systems. So now we are going to look at thermal conductivity and its relationship with temperature. So we know that thermal conductivity varies with temperature and this means that you have the same material but it has a different thermal conductivity at different temperature. So what does that mean? So for example, the thermal conductivity of air at 20 degrees Celsius would be different from the thermal conductivity of air at 400 degrees Celsius. And we are going to see a few graphs of for different materials. So let's plot the temperature in the x-axis and the thermal conductivity in the y-axis and we're going to see a few gases. So for example, carbon dioxide, it has a sort of uh, increasing uh, effect with temperature for thermal conductivity and air also have increasing thermal conductivity with increasing temperature. Hydrogen also increases in its thermal conductivity, but it tends to get a bit flat, say for example, after 300 degrees Celsius, but we know that there is a pretty distinguished trend. For water, it increases then after some point it decreases. For engine oil, the trend is sort of inversed. It starts to go down fast, then it increases with respect to temperature. We also have amorphous carbon that also has pretty high thermal conductivity compared to these uh, gases or the engine oil. And then we have, for example, copper, which also has a uh, sort of downward thermal conductivity with respect to temperature, but then it starts to recover and increase. Aluminum also has a pretty constant thermal conductivity value, but after a certain temperature value, it also increases. And we know a common metal, iron, it has a decreasing thermal conductivity. We also have a liquid metal such as mercury that also increases in thermal conductivity with respect to temperature. So we know thermal conductivity also varies with direction. So what does this mean? This means if you have a, say for example, a block of material and we put a coordinate system next to it. So we have XYZ coordinate. And now we know in the X direction, whatever the thermal conductivity value is, it may not be the same to the thermal conductivity value in the Y or in the Z direction. 
and this means because k can vary with direction and it varies because of difference in crystal structure in different directions because in different directions the crystal structure is not the same and we can actually classify materials in terms of uh, how their properties vary with direction so for example we have isotropic materials where thermal conductivity is independent of direction so no matter in which direction you go inside the material we are going to find that the thermal conductivity value is always the same for orthotropic material yeah it does vary with different direction so if you are going in the x direction you are going to find a thermal conductivity value of say for example 100 then if you are going in the z direction then you might expect a different value and a good example is wood because of the structure of wood we know that it has different thermal conductivity values in different direction and for example uh, for particular types of wood you can actually have three numbers or three directions you can use just uh, three values and this is what separates it from anisotropic materials where k can vary in any direction so for anisotropic material just follow these green arrows it can vary in any directions but for orthotropic material we know that it varies only in the coordinate direction so three directions you choose so for example for wood it's radial longitudinal or in the tangential directions and what is interesting is these three directions are perpendicular to each other so for orthotropic material essentially we just need three numbers so k subscript x and ky and kz and they are not going to be equal because if they are equal then it would mean that this is a isotropic material right so for these three directions we are going to have three different values of heat flux and we are going to write this equation so for x direction you have q dot x uh, double prime equals minus kx partial t partial x and for the other directions we are going to just change the subscript and change the uh, gradient of temperature with respect to that direction but we also have to remember the thermal conductivity also varies with temperature right and because it can vary with temperature so all these three numbers kx ky kz they can also vary with temperature too so ideally these three numbers that i'm marking with this green line they are functions of temperature and to represent that mathematically we should clearly write them as functions of temperature and and the equations should look like uh, this uh, you should have qx double prime because minus kx which is a function of t and then partial t partial x and we're going to correct the other equations too so now for anisotropic materials heat fluxes are linear combinations of temperature gradients so now it uh, the thermal conductivity can vary in any direction so now we are going to calculate the heat flux a bit differently now you need more numbers and these numbers are essentially uh, going to create a uh, matrix uh, i'm going to show it to you later we are going to write the heat fluxes in each direction qx qy and qz with uh, double primes in them because they are fluxes and we are going to use a consistent notation to create the linear combinations and sometimes it's convenient to write them in the matrix form so you are going to put the fluxes in a column matrix and then we are going to write all these nine numbers that represent the thermal conductivity of this uh, material of these anisotropic materials and then we are going to write all these temperature gradients in a column matrix too so when you multiply these two matrix matrices you are going to get uh, the previous relationship back so if this was an orthotropic material then off diagonal terms would be zero so you only need three numbers so we're just going to eliminate the six numbers and only keep the numbers that are along the diagonal and you can check then you are going to get the same relation back as in for orthotropic material so do it as a homework for your own understanding so now we are going to summarize what we learned about thermal conductivity thermal conductivity varies with three things essentially that are very important uh, they vary with material they vary with temperature and also they vary with direction and we measure it experimentally using fourier's law
so it's very important to understand Fourier's law and you can find the value of thermoconductivity in data tables, books, charts or from internet search.